How's it going everybody? Welcome to the channel and welcome to another Elden Ring video. Now if you're anything like me, you've been playing the crap out of Elden Ring the past month and your YouTube recommendations is probably just littered with Elden Ring content. And one thing I've noticed with a lot of YouTubers is that anytime they discover a new weapon, they make a video on it, slap the words overpowered into the title, and rack in hundreds of thousands of views. So apparently every weapon in Elden Ring is overpowered, and I basically just got tired of seeing all these different YouTube videos claiming that this weapon or that weapon is the greatest weapon in the game. So I figured I would make my own list. Now I have 25 weapons that are on this list. The weapons on this list are A, weapons that I discovered are really, really good in my playthroughs, and B, weapons I've gathered from just a bunch of different YouTube videos. Anytime I saw a video dedicated to a weapon that had hundreds of thousands of views and they were claiming that the weapon was overpowered, I added it to the list. And one of the big factors I have with ranking these weapons is how easy they are to use. There's a ton of different play styles out there, so everyone's weapon are going to handle differently. I'm not taking into consideration building your entire character around a weapon or building your entire character over a specific Ash of War. I figured the fairest way to rank all of these weapons is how they come as soon as you obtain them. I'm not including any magic or spells that you can do to buff the weapon or any Ashes of War that can buff the weapons. The fairest way I think that you can rank these is if a casual player picked it up and just started swinging it. How far is that weapon going to get them in this game? I'm basically ranking these weapons based off of how well a weapon can perform with as little effort as possible. So jumping right into the list, the first weapon we have is the Ice Rend Hatchet. Now this hatchet was what all of the speedrunners were using for the longest time up until it recently got nerfed. This thing was an absolute monster. If this was the weapon that everyone was using to speedrun the entire game, then that obviously tells you that this is a good weapon. If this is the go-to weapon that people were just melting bosses with and melting large crowds of enemies, obviously something's really good about it. It would have easily been S tier because of how good this weapon was, but since it's nerf, it's just not as good as it used to be. It's still really, really good. Don't get me wrong. It's great at still doing a lot of frost damage to bosses. It's good at taking out large numbers of enemies. Anything that gets frostbite will take more damage afterwards. So if you manage to get the frostbite to proc, this is going to do really, really well. And I'm going to put it up at A tier. So it would have been S tier, but it falls down to A tier for me. So up next, we have the Eclipse Shottle. Now the reason I'm including this on the list is because I've seen a bunch of different people talking about this weapon, because this is the only weapon in the game that can do the death ailment. So what this weapon does is when you activate its ability, you can set it on fire with the death flames. Now what's supposed to happen with the death flames is that if you get it to proc, it will do a high amount of damage or insta-kill an enemy. The problem is, I've never gotten this thing to proc almost ever on an enemy, and with the left trigger ability, if you activate it two times in a row, it will do this little mini explosion. Well, the explosion takes way too long to activate. If you're fighting a boss or something, good luck ever getting this off in time. The damage just isn't that high, and I've used this thing on and off throughout two playthroughs, and I've never had much success with it. I think it's extremely overrated. I think the only reason that people talk so highly about this weapon is because it's the only weapon in the game that has this ability, but in my experience, I don't think it's very good, so I'm going to put it at D tier. So up next, we have the Dragon King's Cragblade. Now this is a giant spear that I'm pretty sure you get from defeating the Dragon Lord. Now this giant spear is pretty awesome. It has the ability of doing lightning damage, and its left trigger ability is this really cool, like, explosion move. When you activate it, you turn into this big cloud of smoke, and if anything gets in that cloud of smoke, they'll get hit with electric damage. But if you can manage to get the special move off, it is going to do a high amount of damage. It will one-shot most of the smaller enemies, and it will do a big chunk of damage to some of the bosses. The problem with this weapon is that the ability can miss quite often. I couldn't tell you how many times I've tried to time this ability the right way. It's really hard to get the timing right. I've activated this ability so many times and just completely missed my target, and then I'll just get wrecked by the boss. It's a really fun weapon to use, especially if you have a big shield and you just like to hide behind the shield and poke and prod at the enemy. But because of its special ability being so hit and miss, I'm going to put it at B tier. 
So next up, we have the Reduvia Dagger. Now this is a bleed dagger that you can get pretty early on in the game. And early on, this dagger is really, really good. Its left trigger ability shoots out this wave of bleed damage and you can just spam it over and over and over. But the problem with this weapon is that the left trigger ability, the ranged attack, just doesn't have very much range. You basically have to be up close and personal to get it to hit the opponent. And late game, it's just not as good as a lot of these other weapons. Early game, it's fairly good though. It is pretty good at proccing bleed damage. But in comparison to a lot of these other weapons, I'm going to put this one at C tier. So up next we have Margot's Cursed Sword. So obviously you get this weapon from defeating Margot. Now this sword is actually pretty cool. This sword has some crazy long reach to it. Uh, you can swing this around and hit multiple targets at the same time. You can hit targets that are pretty far away from you, but its left trigger ability is actually really cool because every time you swing it, it cuts through the air and lights the air on fire. So if you can get up close and personal to a boss or stagger a boss and they're laying down on the ground, you can go up to them and activate this a couple times. And you will not only do damage by hitting them with the sword, you will also get a lot of damage from the follow-up fire attack. So this sword is really good at doing a ton of damage really, really fast to a boss. I would definitely pick it up once you defeat Margot, and I'm going to put this weapon at B tier. So next up we have the Moonville Katana. Now the Moonville Katana is what everyone was talking about for weeks. I saw this sword everywhere, and honestly, it's a really good sword. This sword helped me beat the final boss in my first playthrough. It has a unique ability where every time you unsheathe the sword, it can just do this big beam attack, and it's just a fun weapon to use. You don't have to think much to use it. I'm pretty sure that it got nerfed though, so I don't think it's as good as what it was, but I'm putting it up at A tier because it's a really, really good weapon to use and I highly recommend everybody go out and get it. So up next is the Magma Blade. So this is a weapon that I recently just discovered. I had to farm for hours to get this weapon, but I can say that it was worth it because it is so fun to use. This weapon is really good. It does tons of fire damage so you can set enemies on fire. Its left trigger ability is great at stunning bosses and stunning enemies because you not only swing the sword, but every time you swing with the left trigger ability, it will drop lava onto the ground. And any enemy that steps in this lava will get staggered and then will take damage over time. So this weapon is great at running up to bosses and just spamming the trigger ability. You can drop tons of fire and lava onto the ground and it's really good at stun locking bosses. So I'm still fairly new to this weapon. I've not played with it too, too much in comparison to these other weapons, but based off of what I've played with so far, it's an easy A tier for me but it could easily go up to S tier. I just have to play around with it more. It's one of the harder weapons in the game to get because it just comes down to RNG and you have to grind and grind and grind to get it. But when you do get it, it's really good. Highly recommend it. So up next is the Grafted Blade or the Game of Thrones Blade. It's a giant sword made out of a bunch of mini swords. Now what's so cool about this weapon is when you activate its special ability, it doesn't do any big swing or any slam move or any powerful move. What it does do is buff all of your stats by five temporarily. So that is extremely handy in whatever situation. So this weapon is basically used for if you want to swap to a different weapon or swap to magic or just have more health and stamina at the time if you want to buff yourself to increase your carry weight this weapon is just a temporary plus five to everything and that's pretty great to have it's really handy to run into a boss fight hit left trigger instantly get your health bar a lot larger now i don't think it's one of the best weapons on this list but having that plus five to all your stats is pretty handy but i'm going to put it at b tier so next up on the list, we have the Morris Executioner Sword. Now this sword, I've seen a lot of people talk about this. I've seen multiple videos on this sword because when everyone was on the rave about bleed damage and everybody was making builds for bleed damage, this sword was up there because this sword does a lot of bleed damage. Now its left trigger ability is really cool looking because when you hit left trigger, you throw the sword out in front of you and it spins around in circles really fast, dealing multiple ticks of damage to the enemy. So if you can get a boss while he's laying down or a boss that's frozen in place or a boss that's not paying attention you can get multiple hits off before they even realize that you're attacking them the problem with this sword though is that it misses a lot it's really hard to get this off mid battle another problem is that you can't really cancel it so you're kind of dedicated to the move once you do it leaving you really defenseless 
And honestly, because of its special ability missing so often, it really knocks some points for me, and I just don't think this weapon is as good as what a lot of people say it is. I do wish it was better, and I wish it would proc bleed a little bit more than what it does, but I'm going to put this weapon at C tier, just because of how much it lets your guard down when you're using its ability. So up next is the Helfen Steeple. Now I really like this sword, I was using it quite a bit because its left trigger ability ignites the sword with ghost flames, and hitting enemies with the ghost flames has a chance of catching them on fire with ghost fire, and ghost fire does a lot of frost damage, so if you get this to proc on an enemy you can give them frostbite, leaving them susceptible to a lot more damage. So I think this weapon's pretty fun to use, but I don't think it's worthy of A tier or S tier, so I'm going to put it at B tier. So next we have the Sword of Night and Flame. So I would have easily put this at S tier if it was a month ago because this sword was just melting through everything. This sword in my opinion was easily the best sword in the game because it comes with two different abilities. It has basically this big magic Kamehameha move where you just blast anything in front of you. And it also comes with this big flame attack so it's great at clearing out big groups of enemies, it's great at catching bosses on fire, it's big magic beam is great at melting bosses health bars. I used this weapon to kill so many bosses in my first playthrough before it got nerfed. The nerf was pretty significant to it though, so it's going from S tier to now I think it's at a good A tier. It's still a great weapon to have, and if you don't have it yet, I highly recommend you look it up and go pick it up for yourself. So next we have the Sword of Saint Trina. I saw this sword get recommended to me from a couple Couple different youtubers and I gotta say this sword is actually pretty good now this sword has the ability of putting enemies to sleep which can be really handy for certain situations for example for one of my boss fights I was fighting one of the big bears and luckily it was able to put the bear to sleep and if you're in a boss fight and you put the boss to sleep that gives you enough time to heal yourself drink some potions maybe switch weapons switch your armor if you want to it gives you the perfect amount of time to prep what your next attack is going to be now unfortunately it doesn't work work on every single boss. Some bosses can't go to sleep, so what it will do instead is stagger them for about two seconds, which can be all of the time in the world if you want to get a quick health potion off. One of the downsides though is that late game I noticed I wasn't getting it to proc almost at all. Some of the bigger stronger bosses at the end were resisting it all the time, but overall it's a really great weapon for boss fights, so I'm putting it up at A tier. So up next we have one of the hardest weapons in the game that you can get, and it is the Hand of Melania. Now the Hand of Melania you get from obviously defeating Melania, but Melania is one of the strongest bosses in the game. So many people have struggled with Melania, and her sword has this insane combo move. Unfortunately though, I don't think it's as good as what a lot of people think it is. It's definitely not as good in your character's hand versus in Melania's hand, but from what I found when you use it, its special fury ability just isn't that good. Now it's pretty good in PvP if you're one of those players that likes to play against other players online, but from what I've noticed when you use it against bosses, anytime you hit the left trigger ability, it's really easy to get knocked out of that ability. So if I'm going up against a boss and I use it, you can technically get a lot of bleed procs with it, but I've used this time and time again against bosses, and they'll easily just smack me and knock me out of the ability and do a lot of damage to me. And this sword is just high risk, high reward, but for the most part, I didn't really see much of a reward with this sword. It still has really long reach though, so I mean, it's got some range to it. You can hit enemies that are pretty far distance away from you, but I don't think it's worthy of S tier, so I'm going to put it up at A tier. So up next is the Rivers of Blood Katana. Now the Rivers of Blood Katana has a bit of a mixed reaction in the community. Some people love this weapon, some people despise this weapon. Now the people that despise this weapon are probably the ones that play PvP, and for some reason there's like a bunch of gatekeepers in this community that want other people to struggle as much as possible, and they don't want people to beat bosses with ease. This weapon is sort of frowned upon by some because of just how good it is. This weapon is amazing. Now like I said, I'm ranking these weapons based off of how good they are with as little effort as possible, and the Rivers of Blood is god tier. Like I'm telling you now, it's going straight up to S tier, it's the first S tier weapon on this list, and it's just really really good. Basically when you pick up this weapon, all you have to do is spam the left trigger ability, and that's it. 
Just spam this weapon's ability. Even when you run out of FP, you can still use the ability. It just doesn't do the bloody attack, but it still does the animation. And this Katana Sword is nuts because it procs bleed damage so much and so frequently that this Katana just melts through health bars. The only thing it doesn't do good against is like stone creatures, any kind of creature that can't bleed. But anything that can bleed, it will just shred right through. And it's easily one of the best weapons in all of Elden Ring. If you haven't gotten it yet, I highly recommend you get it. I have two of them because when I started my new game plus, this is one of the first weapons that I made sure to go and get. If you want to play on easy mode, I highly recommend you get this. Even the most casual player can use this weapon with very little effort and still just melt bosses. And that's why I'm putting it up at an easy S tier. So up next is the Bloodhound's Fang. Now this is another bleed weapon and this is a weapon that you can get pretty early on. And this is a pretty well-rounded weapon. One of my friends used this for like half of his playthrough. He carried this clear until like the snowy area. And this sword's great. It has some reach to it. Its special ability lets you dodge backwards to get out of the way of any sort of big attack. So this sword is really great at running up to bosses, doing a bunch of bleed damage, and then hitting the left trigger, and then escaping back behind you. Run in, hit a couple times, escape. Run in, hit a couple times, escape. So it's a really good weapon you can get early on, it does bleed damage, it has a cool ability, and it's a weapon that's good throughout an entire playthrough. So it is a really good weapon, it's just not as good as some of these other ones on this list, but I'm going to put it at B tier. So up next is the Rune's Great Sword. Now this is a pretty beefy sword that not everyone is going to get the chance to use, because it requires 50 strength, so the average player probably isn't ever going to get the opportunity to use this effectively. But when you do get to use it, it has a pretty cool ability where if you hit left trigger, you slam it down on the ground and it sends out this big shock wave of electricity. So this is really good if there's a bunch of enemies coming at you at the same time, you can just knock them all down. It actually does pretty decent damage against bosses as well. The downsides are, like I said, it's got 50 strength, it has a pretty slow swing speed, and it's just not as good as a another weapon on this list that I'll get to here later that does essentially the same thing but better. So it's an all around okay weapon, it just costs way too much strength to get to use it and because of that I'm putting it up at C tier. So next up is the Sacred Relic Sword. So this is the sword that you get from defeating the final boss of the game and unfortunately you aren't going to see much use of this sword unless you're rune farming at the end of the game or you start a new game plus because obviously if it's the last weapon you're going to get you're not going to have very many things to fight but in new game plus or if you're trying to just rune farm and kill multiple enemies really quickly, this sword is great at killing small enemies. Now, not everything is about dealing damage to bosses. There are other enemy types in this game, and the majority of your time playing this game, you're not going to be in a boss fight. You're going to be fighting smaller things throughout the environment, and this sword excels in that because this sword's special ability just will instantly clear out any small groups of enemies, zombies, dogs, you name it. It will kill it. It's special ability isn't the best against bosses and it takes way too long to charge up so I wouldn't recommend it in a boss fight but because it is the absolute best at clearing out small enemies I'm going to put it up at S tier because like I said it's not all about killing bosses in Elden Ring and this sword excels at killing everything that isn't a boss so in my opinion that makes it an easy S tier so next up is the Halo Scythe now this scythe has some crazy ridiculous range to it so if you want a really long range weapon and you just want to swing around and keep enemies at a distance, I highly recommend you get the Halo Scythe. Now what's really cool about the Halo Scythe is that its left trigger ability shoots out this giant beam and you can actually spam this beam over and over and over. So if you have enough magic you can just keep spamming this ability and it will send out multiple beams at a range that have some pretty good tracking on it. So this Scythe is really good at taking out things that are flying such as bats or those annoying hawks with the swords on their feet. Its attack has some pretty decent range to it so you can hit targets that are pretty far away. It does fairly good against bosses as well, because this thing does of course do bleed damage, so you can proc bleed on a boss fight. And then if you want to stay at a distance in a boss fight, you can use the left trigger ability. So I think this scythe is an all around great weapon to use, and I'm putting it up at A tier. So up next is a kind of goofy weapon that I only recently started using, and it is the Envoy's Longhorn. Now I always thought that these weapons were goofy and stupid, and I didn't think anything of them. Then I saw a couple YouTube videos saying that it was really good, so I decided to check it out. 
And I gotta say, these horns are actually pretty good. Now there's actually three different versions of the horn. There's like a smaller horn, a medium horn, and a really big horn. Now the big horn shoots a giant bubble, and the smaller horn shoots just one bubble at a time. So this is the medium weapon of the three, and this weapon shoots out just a bunch of bubbles. And they go out and they track to any of the nearby enemies. So the downside with this is that the range isn't that good with the bubbles, but they do a high amount of damage. So if there's a large group of enemies it's going to kill pretty much all of them and surprisingly it does good damage to bosses so if you can stagger a boss and then do the bubble move you're going to just melt through a boss's health bar this is a weapon that pretty much anyone can use with zero effort you just go spam the bubble attack and you can melt through everything i don't think it's worthy of s tier but i am going to put it up at a tier so next up is the giza's wheel this is a weapon i saw talked about a lot when everyone was making bleed build videos and this weapon's basically a chainsaw that does bleed damage. Now, I don't think this weapon's very good at all because of its special ability taking just way too long to charge up and you have to have an enemy sit still to get it to work. Now, if you can find a way to paralyze an enemy and get them to sit still or if an enemy's asleep, maybe you're using a different weapon to put them to sleep and then switching to this weapon, but the wheel just takes way too much time to grind. It's really good against that giant dragon that doesn't move, so if you consider that a boss fight, it's really good at taking out that giant dragon, but I found that this weapon's special ability just takes too long to get going and it just isn't very practical. So I'm going to put it down at D tier. So up next is the Blasphemous Blade. Now you get this blade from defeating one of the major bosses in the game and this sword is a must have for pretty much everybody because this sword has a passive ability where anytime something in your vicinity dies, it will replenish your health. Anytime you get a kill with this weapon, it will replenish your health and it has this very powerful left trigger ability that sends out this big wave of fire and it will knock any smaller enemies down that gets hit with this it will practically one shot most smaller enemies and it does a lot of high damage to bosses and even has the chance to stagger the bosses so this weapon is so good all you basically have to do is carry it around and you will siphon health from enemies you can just spam the left trigger ability and just shred through bosses with it and it basically puts this game on easy mode anyone can use this weapon with ease and just tear through everything and i think because of that it's an easy s tier recommend everyone go get that weapon you're definitely not going to regret it so getting into the final four up next is the bolt of grand sax now this is a giant spear that you can get from the giant spear statue inside the city and this weapon is really cool because it also does lightning damage so if you like spears and you have a big shield you can safely sit beside the shield and just poke at enemies at a safe distance and it has a really cool ranged attack that you can do with its special ability it basically just summons this giant lightning bolt and you can just sling it at something and do a ton of damage and the range on this attack is really far too so you can safely hit enemies at a distance and you don't have to worry about them reaching you if it doesn't one shot kill the target you can hit them multiple times before they get to you because you can safely do this at such a far range and overall i think this is a great weapon to have it's one of the legendary weapons in the game that will grant you the achievement and i'm putting the bolt of grand sax up at a tier so up next is the dragon scale blade now the dragon scale blade is a katana and I don't see very many people talking about this one. This katana is actually really good because it does lightning and frost damage at the same time. Its left trigger ability will put the sword up into the air, summon lightning, and slam it down to the ground, hitting the enemy. And once you activate that ability, the frost lightning will stay on the sword for a couple seconds. So this sword is really good at doing both lightning and frost. Like I said previously, if you can proc frost damage on an enemy, they will take a lot more damage after that. So using this sword, if you can give them frost fight, you can also also hit them with that lightning damage at the same time and it's just a really well-rounded weapon and I'm putting it up at B tier. So up next is the Wings of Estelle. Now this is another weapon that I've recently been introduced to. I've only recently started using this and from what I can tell this is another really great weapon because when you swing this weapon it has two major attacks. It's regular heavy attacks send out this blue wave of magic damage so that's a plus and then it's left trigger ability slices through the air and sends out this big wave of magic smoke and then all of the magic smoke will explode. So if you can run up to a boss, spam this ability and it will do a ton of damage over time to the boss. So overall, this weapon's really good at doing a bunch of damage really quick to a boss. And if a lot of smaller enemies are running up into your face, just use a left trigger, send out this big magic smoke wave and it will keep all the smaller enemies at bay. And because of how well-rounded this weapon is, I'm putting it at A tier. But because I am still new to this weapon, it could easily be an S tier. I just gotta play 
play around a little bit more with it. And then the final weapon on this list is the Black Knife. Now the Black Knife, I think, is really good. It easily carried me through a lot of boss fights. I used it to kill Melania for the first time because the Black Knife has the ability to slowly chip away at a boss's health bar. So when you have this knife, all you have to do is essentially just spam the left trigger attack and it will just eat away at an enemy's health pool. And according to the description, it shortens the boss's overall health. So the more that you spam this, the more it will strength their max health pool. It has a really fast swing speed, so you can get a ton of damage off really quickly. So overall, I think this is just a great weapon to have. And because it basically puts all the bosses on easy mode, I'm putting it up to S tier because it's just a weapon that I feel like that everybody can use. And because it's so easy to use and does such a good job at melting bosses, I think that makes it an easy S tier. But that is going to do it for this list, everyone. I know this is a bit of a longer video, so if you guys enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and consider hitting the subscribe button and hitting the bell for notifications. If you guys want to see other Elden Ring videos, I have a couple tier lists already up on the channel. I have one for the spirit summons and for different armor sets and stuff, so be sure to check those out. And that is going to do it for this video, everyone, and I will talk to you all next time.